Speaking of which, Vince, are you ready for rapid fire? I'm always ready for rapid fire. Let's yeah, go, baby. Sean. All right, so Sam Hartman did a little cartwheel, somersault, whatever you want to call it, into the end zone on his touchdown. Here he was afterwards talking about that flip. I've been doing that one for a while. It's kind of the, well, the gladiator that got ripped off today after sliding. It was kind of a man in the arena, already not entertained type deal. It was a little, little knee guy move, so I'm a little disappointed in it, but sometimes it just comes out. But no, I mean, it was, it was not premeditated. It just kind of happened, and the flip wasn't definitely premeditated. It kind of happened. But, you know, you got to get out there and move around a little bit, so it was fun. Little gladiator, are you not entertained? Me guy move, said Sam Hartman. So Vince, were you entertained? Oh, I was abs- I was, I was, uh, let's see. When he went up in the air, my heart stopped for a moment, as I'm sure the entire coaching staff and Notre Dame's heart stopped for a moment, like, <gasps> and then he, <clears throat> he does a beautiful, like he tucks, tucks his head, like beautifully hits the ground, pops right back up and then does the, you know, one of these, and it was like, okay, he's okay. Blows We're a good. kiss to the crowd. Yeah, kiss to the crowd. I and and he called it a me moment. You know what? You're entitled to a me moment, there, Sam Hartman. I was okay with it. I I was very entertained by everything that number ten in navy blue did on Saturday. It seemed like that it that 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 flip was almost in slow motion, like. <laughs> And then I kind of lost my breath there for a second. It's like, oh, my goodness, you know, like, do you really want your guy doing somersault? But, I mean, that he did have to go up and over that defender. It was, once again, yet another very well-drawn-up play. And it, the, the C's part yeah. for him. Oh, yeah. and, and he was – and then, the you know, the blow to the, to the crowd and, and all that stuff. I don't know how excited Marcus Freeman was about seeing that afterwards. But at the same time, hey – he got to the end zone, did what he was yeah, supposed he to do. Uh, it's, but I, I would say I was a little bit concerned about seeing your quarterback, who has done so much against Tennessee State, make that kind of move. But it was very entertaining. It was. We'll have to say that. It was, and I hope he's entertaining for the next uh, 12 games. That would be my goal. Absolutely. We saw our first field goal block of the season. Mr. Anye, Jason Anye, blocking the field goal there after the uh, the Devin Ford kickoff return that we were talking about. So before tonight, me and Riley were like, hey, let's blow up the star. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. so um, ball snap, um, me and him, we get low, we get really low, go through the guard's chest, and then like, I just put my hand up, and luckily it hit, so thankful for that. Let's blow up this guard is what he and Riley Mills were saying <laughs> before that. Vince, what did you think of the block? They did exactly that. And it was a no look block. I mean, he threw his hand up. He wasn't even looking and it hit, I think it hit the back of his hand, but uh, Hey, a block is a block. And it, if the crowd wasn't already fired up after the no call and all that stuff, they are fired up after that one. And Marcus Freeman was super fired up after they blocked that kick. So uh, he was not docile on the sidelines in any way, shape or form after that. It was a great block. It was great. It was awesome. And I tell you what, from what we were talking about, the defense really, after that hit on Devin Ford, the crowd is starting to get fired up and kind of going back to the gladiator a a little bit. It was almost like an unleash hell kind of moment, you know, the way the defense did things and then just capping it all off by blocking a field goal, more success in the red zone by the defense, by the way. The defense already has more red zone stops in two games than they had all of last season. They had oh two my. red zone stops, field goals included, all of last season. They are now two for five. They have given up two red zone scores in five trips. So already three red zone stops this year. And the touchdown percentage is zero. That's right. Which, that's right. That's pretty great. Yep. So, again, doesn't matter who the opponent is. When teams get that close and everything gets scrunched up, I mean, they didn't. They were terrible at it last year. They played was, Navy last year too. They played. Yep. They played UNLV last year too. They played Boston College last year. They played plenty of bad teams last year right. too. Still, only they had two red zones. Exactly. Stops. And and it is something that they worked on in the off season, and it was very clear that they worked on it in the off season. Yep. Uh, and, and in fact, I just did a 
Marcus Freeman notebook where he talked about that today. So you can read some of that on the site, irishbreakdown.com. Few uh, listener questions that we have here before we move to some of our other topics. Ian Johnson says, is it me or does pain not look as good as we thought? Maybe I'm subconsciously comparing him to love, estimate, and price. What do you think, Vince? I, I think he looks fine. I think he looks exactly like we thought he was going to look. I don't uh, I don't have any issue with uh, Jabron Payne doing what he's been doing. I mean, I thought that uh, he did a good job of getting low and kind of squirting out and, and getting some uh, good tough yards when he, when he got the ball, um, I thought he did a good job of not getting tackled there towards the, uh, towards the goal line. He kind of scored it out and did the three legged drill there for a little bit, probably picked up an extra five yards. So no, I think he's doing just fine. He hasn't had the holes that some of these other guys have had either. So, you know, well, ebbs and flows. I mean, estimate, I, estimate just creates his own. Holes. That is the other fair. guys have may have holes to run. And estimate was always but, here. Remember? I mean, he's always been the number one and then it's uh -huh. been kind of everybody. And else. that's, that's really, it's, it's still, Audric is clearly the number one and deserves to be the number one. I think number two, especially like look how early Jeremiah love got in the game yeah. the other day. And just the way the running back rotation has gone to me, there's no there's no clear cut number two. It might say Jerbon Payne on the depth chart right now, but to me, there's no clear cut number two. And I don't think there necessarily has to be. The way they have used those guys, they've shown that they're willing to to get them out there pretty early and often. Yeah, and I think you know part of the reason that uh, that Love got in there a little bit earlier is due to the injury to Devin Ford. I think. I think he. Might ah, that's true. I didn't think about it that way. But, snatched yeah. up some of those snaps. You know what I mean? But. Uh -huh. As Brian leaned over to me in the press box and said, those other guys better watch out. 12 is coming. And so I think that, you know, you're going to see Love get a lot more uh, carries and a lot more opportunities. You know, not that those guys, the other guys aren't doing well, but you got to get 12 on the field, man. I mean, he's just special with the football. Yeah. And Price has shown himself as a receiver, and we still yeah. haven't seen as much of him running the football. And I do kind of wonder both offensively and defensively because of the competition that they play. Like they showed some, th some certain things on film in both games, but now the level of competition does go up. Like what, what were they maybe not showing these first, there's right. some base stuff that that's going to be the same no matter what on both sides. But what was Notre Dame? maybe not showing that we're going to see more oh, of yeah. this weekend. Well, I mean, and, we, we talked about in the post-game show about the lack of deep shots. You know what I'm saying? And, uh -huh. and I think, I think part of that was they didn't need to, I mean, yes, there eventually it would be nice to see something along those lines. I think they could have taken some deep shots against Tennessee state. There was a lot of times where they were packing the box. We had one-on-one -on -one competition, you know, and, and they had the opportunity. There's just no need. There was just no need to take deep shots, right? So I think that whole part of the playbook is has yet to be explored, I guess is the best way to put it. You know well, and I mean? there were other times when Hartman was looking deep and they weren't there. And that's something sure. Jesse was talking about with 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 that uh four two five look was there are gonna be times when some of those deep shots are harder to come by. And Tennessee State did have a decent secondary. Now Notre Dame's receivers still should have been and and were better than them but you're absolutely right i think that we're going to see more of that army 72 asking do you expect notre dame to go up tempo against nc state at times when when it might call for it i mean they can they showed that they can do it if they want to do it i mean it's in their arsenal i don't think that they're an up tempo team automatically but they have it in their arsenal so i think there'll be times where they do it and there'll be times I mean, I hate to break it to everybody, but they did do some scan offense uh, at times, too, in this game. And so it can be done a certain way so that it is very effective as opposed to doing it the entire game. So I think they'll speed it up. I think they'll slow it down. I think it just depends on the flow of the game. You know, and this is this is still a good point going back to stuff we talked about last week. James says no need. We're talking about the long pass when the shorts were wide open. -ish. Yeah. Still take what they give you. Absolutely. If, if it's there. If it's there, take it. And uh, Notre Dame, both the receivers and especially the running backs, obviously, with what they did in terms of yards after catch. But they have they have shown that 
that they can hurt you. And, and Sam Hartman yeah. has been very accurate, completing over 82% of his passes through two games. So if it's there, take it. And then eventually, if, if you keep making them pay with that short stuff, the long stuff will be there because then they'll try to take that away. And then I, I think this is a receiving group that can really, yeah. really hurt you. Well, I think teams are really concerned about Notre Dame beating them, beating them long. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and if they're just watching the film, they're going to pack the box. They're going to try to prevent some of the short stuff, the crossers, things of that nature. Go for it. See what happens. Joe says he's worried a little bit about the interior offensive lineman. Didn't have a great game against Tennessee State. I I thought that we would see a little bit more domination on both sides of the line of scrimmage uh, that, that we didn't necessarily see. What would you think, Vince? Uh, I don't think the line at all had a great game against Tennessee State, like across the board. And I wouldn't just pin it on the interior line. I don't think, I don't think Fisher had a great game. I think he missed some blocks that he shouldn't have missed. Um, I so I wouldn't say the interior. I would just say the line in general didn't have a great game. Um, but again, we're saying this, uh, you know, about a team that had 557 yards of total offense, 221 rushing yards and 336 passing yards. So again, this is something that we can nitpick, but I'm not worried about it. Josh says he thought he saw a lot of calls where the quarterback goes to the sideline to get the play rather than go to the huddle. And that was when the backups were in. It, yeah. And I meant, I meant to ask about this today and it totally went. So I'm going to write that down. I'm going to try to bring it up Thursday to see. What was up with that? If that was intentional or what yeah, was that, actually going on? That was that was only with Angeli and Minchi. It was never with Sam Hartman, I don't believe. And so my guess is they were just trying to use the entire play clock. I mean, that it's they wanted the time to tick. I mean, that was that makes uh, sense. It's not like high school expedience where, was not yeah, a big concern. Right. So they're like, well, if we call them over to call the play, it's not going to go quite as fast because it's really hard as an offense to like sit there and wait to call play, or I mean to snap the ball, especially if you're an offensive lineman. It's a lot easier to stand in the huddle, wait to get the call, get up there, you know, that whole thing. So I, I think it was more of a time situation. Tommy Guns wants to know, do we know what happened to the NC State guy the other night? You will have no to idea. be more specific than that. I know they had a safety who was injured in that game against UConn. I don't know if that's what you're talking about, Tommy. From what I understand, he's better whether or not he'll play against Notre Dame. I'm not sure. I think that there are, there are a lot of good matchups for Notre Dame in this game. I, you know, NC State's secondary will be better than either of the first two teams that they sure. played. But uh, I, I I do think it's a little bit suspect based on what happened in the UConn game. And I think that uh, from a running standpoint, this should be a team that Notre Dame should be able to run against as well. The quarterback is the biggest concern in this game to me. Because like even the receivers – just like looking at the way the UConn get speaking of take what they give you and like they average like nine yards per receiving play against UConn. That is not very downfield. And I think yeah. if it's Notre Dame secondary. That is a, a big match. Yeah. So Tommy says the guy who got carted off. And again, I think you're talking about their safety. And uh, from what I understand, he is, uh, he's at least better, but again, his status as of right now, I don't think is completely known. For the Notre Dame game. I'm glad Saturday. you knew because I haven't watched a single second of NC State <laughs> because we're still doing upon further review tonight. So I have not that turned the true. page. I have not turned the page to NC State just yet. Fill in the blank. It's blank. Florida State dominated LSU 45-24 last night. Oh, it was a thing of beauty. I mean, I I was openly cheering, obviously, for uh Florida State. I'll be the first one to admit it. I was at a local establishment uh, for dinner with my family and it was right around kickoff. And so I had the bartender, you know, turn the game so I could see it. And he's an IB watcher and he's like, I'll change the game. And he turned the volume up and everything so I could hear what was going on. So that was much appreciated. So that was great. And uh, I was cheering for Florida state while I was eating my dinner. And then of course came home for the second half and was doing the same. It was it was fantastic. The second half was just a thing of beauty, Sean. Like thir <laughs> 31 to nothing. I mean, you can't write a better script if you're a Brian Kelly hater. Well, and I tell you what, one, 
for people all this concern about the running clock after first downs that first half took forever to play like it really <laughs> that was did. a long long not attractive first <laughs> half but to see LSU just fall apart like that and then Brian oh. Kelly coming out in the post game show and he's got his quarterback Jaden Daniels sitting next to it not post game show but the post game press conference yeah and he's sitting there talking about we got to develop our guys better and we you know we're not as good as we thought we were and the guy just kind of looks over at BK <laughs> his expression never really changed but he's like is he saying what I think that he's saying right now but it is yeah I, I guess you can say he's honest but to me like you can say okay LSU could go on and and run the table in the SEC, I guess. They've got a fairly favorable schedule with the exception of Alabama. But I think it's like, what, four times now? Something like like they got they got their butts handed to them by Texas A&M at the end yeah. of last year. By and they 15. just got it handed to them by Florida State last night. It didn't come down to the end like it did yeah. last year. Last year was a nail biter. This one yeah. was a butt whooping. I think they played above who they really were for a good deal of last year and i think that you're 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 seeing what brian kelly's actually got down there right it. now and so hey year two regression by a brian kelly quarterback who would have thought huh no, i was just gonna say the same thing it was i mean just change the uniform change the venue and you know it i i i jumped into one of a post game show for lsu and i i obviously did not comment but there were a lot of Notre Dame fans commenting and uh, some <laughs> many that I recognize, let's put it that way, as far as uh, IB people. And I think there were more Notre Dame fans in there than anybody else. And um, it's just, it's funny to me, the, the back and forth that Notre Dame and LSU fans have had over the last, what, 18 months or so. And how, you know, it's, it's going exactly how a lot of Notre Dame fans told LSU fans it was going to go. And we'll see what happens the rest of this year. Brian Kelly will beat the teams he's supposed to beat, just like he always does, because he's a good coach. He is a good coach. But he has yet to prove that he is a great coach. And that's what you need in the SEC, and that's what you need to win championships. And he hasn't proven that yet. I'm sorry. And so we're all just sitting back. Like, they all thought it was sour grapes. Everybody's mad that Brian Kelly left. Like, that's a very small percentage of people. Very small. Yep. Yeah, they lost to Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. Of course, they lost to Georgia in the SEC championship game. They throttled Purdue in the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl, but now they get their uh, their uh, stuff handed to them by Florida State. So they have lost three of their last four games going back to last year, and they have all been by at least 15 points. They lost 38-23 to to Texas A&M, and of course, they lost – in uh, in early October to Tennessee by almost four touchdowns as well. So, again, uh, I think we're just all shocked that a Brian Kelly team didn't show up against good competition. The, the difference of Brian Kelly at LSU and Brian Kelly at Notre Dame, you know what the difference is going to be? Their rope is a lot shorter at LSU than it is at Notre Dame. They will not stand for games like that on a regular basis, right? The big games, the top yep. 10 matchups, they won't stand for that down there in SEC country. He'll be out on his keister real quick if he can't turn something around down there because nine wins on a regular basis, 10 wins, that's not going to cut it, man. It's not going to cut it. Yep. Josh saying red zone offense was terrible, and that is right. And remember – Decided not to kick the field goal, going for it. Hey, yep. the first thing that popped into my mind was get used to it. You know yep. that? Get yep. used to it. Get used to it, LSU fans. So, I mean, I hate to be that guy, but I really enjoyed that game. Like, way more so than I enjoyed Notre Dame's win over Tennessee State. That's for, for sure. For sure. For <laughs> sure. And not close. Well, uh, at the other end of the spectrum – You've got a uh, a big honeymoon going on in Colorado Woo! right now for Deion Sanders. They, they uh, of course, beat TCU, team that went to the college football playoff last year, on Saturday. And here is here's some of Coach Prime's post game. All right. 
What's up, boss? You believe now? You, you, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh no, do you believe that? Huh? Oh no, no, no. I read through that bull junk you wrote. Down. I read through that. I sifted through all that. Yeah. Oh no. Come on. Do you believe? You don't believe. You just answered it. You don't believe. Next question. <laughs> that was Ed Warder, longtime yeah. uh, Dallas area uh, writer, ESPN guy that 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 uh, Dion Coach Prime, as he likes to be called, that uh, that he was uh, going back and forth with. So, what do you think of uh, old Coach Prime's response there, Vince? Coach Prime. Look, you can't take away the fact that they they came to win that game, and I give them all the credit in the world for that. Some of the stuff he said in the press conference, though, was ridiculous. I'm sorry. Number one, the media is not supposed to be rooting for anybody or or you know it's believing. Not, right, like that's not their job, Dion. Like that, you don't. Do you really want a bunch of yes men around there's you? A, there's a little bit want? too much rabbit ears for him. Yeah, you know, absolutely. That, that he has it seems. But like. look. I will admit, I am a Notre Dame fan. He's keeping uh, yeah. his receipts, right? I'm a Notre Dame fan. I will be the first one to admit it, right? I'm a Notre Dame fan, but I will also analyze the team in an honest manner, right? But it is not my job to be the mouthpiece for the head coach and to believe in everything that he's saying. That's not, And that's not Ed Werder's job. It's not his job. His job right. is to cover the team objectively. And they won now, one game. Now, I don't know what Ed Werder or anyone else was saying. And, you know, again, like Ed Werder should be able to ask a question without being a true believer at Deion Sanders postgame <laughs> press. It's like, you right. know, the Colorado media relations guy there. There's like after all that, he did. They didn't even let Werder ask a question. Apparently, they literally just went on to the next game. I guess, yeah, that's, like, not, all right, that's 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 not OK. Guy. Yeah, that's not OK. But you shouldn't have to be a, a media cheerleader to ask the. The head coach, a question, especially after that, you know, like, shouldn't it be enough? You won the game. You know, maybe you can gloat a little bit or whatever you want. Dion's Dion. They did some amazing things. And that was sure. a very entertaining game to watch. I watched the entire first half and then headed over to Notre Dame Stadium for our game after that. And the fact that TC, uh, let me just say this, not that I'll ever have a chance to ask Dion. No question, unless, you know, Notre Dame and Colorado meet up at a bowl game somewhere. But as you know, I at the very least had my money on Colorado to cover the spread. They were a 20, 20 and a half point underdog. I put my money down on Colorado to cover that spread a long time ago. So, Did you get that parlay? Did you get it all? Well, Kansas-Texas is the other game I have it in a parlay. That's not until, like, late October. So I've, oh, I've got to wait a little bit wow. for Kansas to cover against Texas. Okay. But All right. I believe Dion. <laughs> I did right. my part. I believed enough to put my money on it. So that should mean well, something, right? <laughs> look, he said a lot of crazy stuff in that I, – because I watched the entire press conference after the fact. And the whole – like, I didn't understand the whole, like, I'm, I'm a – I believe his quote was something along the lines of I'm a black man coaching a team of 75% black kids. And it makes you feel uncomfortable. Who Who's uncomfortable. Like, I don't like that one made me wonder, like, I don't really understand. Like, is that not the exact situation that's happening at Notre Dame? Well, I don't think that, anybody's feeling uncomfortable about it. Exactly. Like look at every power five roster in America. It's, it's gotta be 75% or higher. African, right. African-American. I don't think I, anyone cares it, about that. I, it's like, a weird comment to make. Like, I don't, nobody feels uncomfortable. Dion has been very outspoken. Like, like, <clears throat> like that, like when I see that, it reminds me a little bit of the whole thing during the world series with Tim McCarver and the, you know, the, the bucket of water and, and all that stuff. It was like, Dion obviously is about Dion and he has no problems oh, yeah. letting you know that he's about Dion. And that's, like he's he's creating conflict where there really doesn't need to be conflict. I think people right. really just sort of wanted to celebrate his win and the fact that he was able to pull off. Nobody knew what this Colorado team was going to be. The headline was what was it? Like 51 transfers coming in and there was so much roster turnover. Right. People didn't know what to expect because of that. And then of course his kid goes out 
Shadur throws I mean, for over 500 game. yards. Yeah, and then yeah. you know you got Dylan Edwards and and um, Hunter. You know the the, the guy who uh, the number one recruit in the country playing Hunter. both ways. Yeah, and, Hunter. Yeah, like there were some. I mean, just a million great stories coming yes. out of that, and the fact that they went on the road and beat a playoff team from a year ago. There, there were a lot of great things. I, I think a lot of people sort of wanted to be excited with him, but he kind of chose to, you know, again, you know, like shine the spotlight on himself. That's great. You know, do your thing, I guess. But it it, it was just a very, very fitting, I guess, that after all this, that, that that's how the Deion Sanders era begins at Colorado with, right. with a sparring match. With I the mean, it, 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 you know, you're right. He could have taken that so many different directions, you know, and really highlighted his kids. Um, and he didn't do that. He didn't. He didn't do that enough, in my opinion. Like that's what you should be doing as a coach. Yeah. Fill in the blank. It's blank that, including that win by Colorado, the Pac-12 is off to a 13 and 0 start this season. The first time the Pac-12 that every team in the Pac-12 has won its season opener. Since 1932, when of course it wasn't the Pac-12 yet. You're right, it was the probably the Pac-8, maybe or the yeah. four. I don't know. Um, look, it's awesome, and it'll never happen again because I don't think the Pac-12 is going to survive. Uh, but what a way to go out! Because we've talked many, many times about how good we think the Pac-12 is going to be, top to bottom. Um, I think it's going to hurt them in the long run. Like I don't know. I think they're going to kind of feast on each other a little bit. Um, but obviously the Pac-12 is breaking up with USC and UCLA and Colorado and all these teams that are leaving, they're breaking up, right? And breaking up is hard to do, but at least they're going out 13-0 and in their first week, man, so good for them. Yeah, Ness, um, and this is the first time I remember Ness commenting in any of our shows, and that's great. If you haven't been here before, welcome. He asked, why are we talking about Dion or Colorado in a Notre Dame football channel? This is the rapid, like if you haven't been here before, not not trying to be a smart aleck about this, but if you haven't been this here before, this is this is the rapid fire segment of Ivy Nation Sports Talk, and we talk about more than just Notre Dame in the rapid fire segment. We talk about wow. a lot of things. We talk about college football. We talk <laughs> about the NFL. We talk some baseball sometimes. So I a did lot of respond. different things that come up in rapid fire. I did respond with this. So that was me that was responding to this. Okay. I was like, it's a sports talk show. It's in the name. It's right there. Right. But so we're not giving you a hard time, buddy. We're we're just uh we're just having some fun with you. <laughs> no problem. We're, we're just having some fun with you. No problem. <laughs> That's and again, you know, like I don't look at it as giving Dion publicity. I mean <clears throat> Dion's he's gonna be plenty. a problem for the college football world. Yeah, he's got plenty yeah. of his own publicity. So we in don't a good way. I mean, he's gonna be a problem in a good way and in a bad way, and you know, good for them for winning awesome like that's great but it's a long road man and their schedule doesn't get any easier so right let's let's see how things progress here well and as i said in my prediction again i thought tcu would still win but i thought it would be a couple touchdowns relatively close it went back and forth there tcu still has a defensive problem i mean they and they scored some points but they also lost a lot. They lost their their three main guys to the NFL: quarterback, leading receiver, and and leading rusher from a year ago to the NFL. So there's and and TCU won a lot of close games to get to where they got last year, as well. So I was never completely bought in on them to begin with. But hey, they had a great season last year. But obviously, it's a new season. And the Horn Frogs have got their own things to figure out. I'm still just amazed that that Coach Prime, 105 degrees in Fort Worth, Texas, was wearing a hooded sweatshirt oh, during that game. Woo! Come on, man! Whew. That was that's uh that's brave. I mean, it was 85 <laughs> at Notre Dame Stadium, and Marcus Freeman was wearing a pullover, but it looked a lot thinner than what Prime was wearing. But it also like. Coach Freeman needs to have like his own logo because like Prime had like his Prime logo over here, you yep. know, a little self promotion going on on the hoodie. So maybe that's why he was wearing it. But uh, I, I think Marcus Freeman needs his own logo. I think he needs something. 
See now, Ness, smart guy, getting in on the action. You can ask your questions here. He, he wants to know if the ACC added anything besides the Dallas-Fort Worth market. I mean, they got San Francisco, San Jose. There are a lot of, you know, a lot yeah. of TVs in that area with, with Cal and Stanford out there. I mean, they added those markets, and they got a few extra million bucks for each team in, yeah. in TV money. Which... It's going to be – I'll be curious to see. I, I – I don't think anyone's really thrilled about it, but I think the ACC figured it's better to add than potentially, you know, stand pat and lose. And so they, they went got, out. They got to add. They got to add. Yeah. And, and, you know, at least Cal and Stanford match, you know, the academic profile that a lot of the ACC teams have. I mean, so that works. It obviously doesn't add to the geographic profile, but then again, which – conference does anymore so mm -hmm. you had to add the acc can't stand pat they, they couldn't let the big 12 scoop those teams up because then the acc then becomes even less relevant right and so they had to they had to do it and i don't necessarily have a problem with it um we just means we get to see more stanford yeah like ness says stanford and Cal are in the san francisco bay area but it's not a college sports market yes stanford women's basketball usually very good no offense i don't know the ratings for them and the ratings don't necessarily matter because here's the the biggest impact i think this has just in terms of an like a revenue play is you have the acc network so by being in dallas fort worth and by being in that san francisco san jose and, and i would assume oakland gets you yeah. know, thrown in there oh, yeah. as well all those cable systems now will yep. will add the acc network and you get you know there's there's a fee that that gets tacked on to everyone's yep. cable bills and so the acc will see that revenue just like yep. that's that's the biggest reason the big 10 wanted Rutgers is they get that New, that New York TV market big 10 network is on out there. And so they get that piece to it. So whether or not people watch is largely irrelevant. It's just that they get easy revenue because now yep. all that gets tacked on to everyone's cable bill. Every yep. month. Which is why they got SMU because it's the Dallas Fort Worth market. And you know, that's money. Yep. Yep. So Indiana the Hoosiers play Indiana State this Friday night. IU head coach Tom Allen had this to say. Quote, I'll say it till I'm blue in the face, till somebody tells me to shut up, then I'll probably say it again. Friday night football is for high school football. End quote. Vince, you buy it or sell it? Oh, that's a huge buy, baby. And you can tell that he used to be a high school football coach <laughs> in Indiana because he's 100% accurate. I, it's a huge buy for me. Friday night is about high school. And it's about high school for me. It, 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 it was about and, and is about high school for you. Like, it's about high school, man. And a lot of these stations and publications and all of these different things, they cover high, the local high school sports, and then they cover the college sports the next day. It's not fair to the high school athletes, the local high school athletes, to have to try to split time with the colleges that are in their area, if there's a game on Friday night, that's not fair to them, man, Completely because they're going to lose every single time. If Notre Dame had a game on a Friday night, every area high school team would have no coverage whatsoever. And that's a travesty because there's only nine regular season high school games in Indiana, right? Friday nights is for high school football. I get that they had games on Thursday nights because the you know, like some action and stuff like that. I get it. And that's fine. But Friday nights need to be sacred. You cannot have games on Friday nights. That's messed up. Completely agree. Uh, like even the NFL still has a rule that they won't play on Friday night. And it's because of this. Like the whole Black Friday game was even in, that they're adding this year on Amazon was even kind of, you know, not controversial, but it was debated a little bit just because sure. of this, because of the fact that, hey, you've, you know, the, it's it's a Friday, and I, it's it's really amazing that the NFL has a rule against this, and colleges who are literally, you know, one just what you talk about. I think that there is kind of that broad interest because it's college, especially if it's a state school, because you have people who went to those schools. So there's you're right; they're going to be competing against the, these these high fair. schools for for coverage on a Friday. 
the fact that colleges and it's really the conferences, I think, who are making these decisions. But it just it stinks because colleges are recruiting these same guys. And at the same time, they're going up against them for this attention on Friday nights. I don't I don't think that it is it is it is good for anyone that colleges no. have decided to do this on Fridays. No. It's terrible. Yeah. Absolutely terrible. you got to start another show here in a little bit. So I want to get through some of these. Uh, we've got just a handful of super chats okay. that are hanging out here right. that I want to get to before we wrap up. So uh, Nathan Milton, first of all, thank you. And he says, thanks for keeping it classy, Ivy. Best in the biz. Appreciate it. Love that. Mr. Milton. Tyler, what do you think of SMU not collecting TV revenue for nine years? I mean, they agreed to it. So I think that they didn't negotiate very well, but I don't know how much leverage well, they had in the negotiation. So I think they just wanted to be part of a power five conference. And if this is what it took to do it, then that's what it took to do it. And they signed on the dotted line. So sorry. They, they did want to be part of a, of a power five conference. They got their wish. And it also shows you, you know, it's a private school, obviously SMU. And it shows you how deep the boosters pockets are because uh, yeah, <laughs> there's still booster revenue that is going to be going into SMU that will that will more than keep them afloat. And uh, at the same time, they uh, they will also be getting like cuts of the NCAA tournament revenue and stuff like that. And from what I understand, that revenue will still uh, because they'll be getting ACC revenue that that revenue should still at least match what they were getting from their old TV, you know, conference affiliation and all that stuff. But I'll be really, I, I will be curious to see what this does for SMU. Do they become a major player again now that they're part of a Power Five conference? They really want it in so much that you say, hey, we're not going to take the money for nine years. And in nine years, we're going to be about two years away from that uh, um, oh, the, the re-upping. ACC uh, yeah. grant of rights. Nathan says, honest question, do folks watch high school football games? Not that they watch them on TV, but it's, I mean, some, because one, there's a rule that they can't televise them live anyway. You know, you have video streams and stuff like that, but it's the local TV stations who are out there covering these high school games. And if there is, like, as you said, if there's a Notre Dame game out there to cover on a Friday, as opposed to high school, most of the attention is going to go to Notre Dame as opposed to the high schools with the coverage anyway. I will say that I watch uh, high school games on TV, but I don't watch them live. I watch them after the fact. So lo- locally we've got channel 46 was like Chuck, Chuck freebie and his guy, his gang, they do a game. I'll watch that when I get home uh, because if they, they stream it live on Facebook and YouTube. So I'll watch that. Um, Elkhart does a, a live stream of their games. And so I'll go back and I'll watch that because they're a future opponent of my son's team. So I, I, I watch stuff on TV. I just don't watch it live because I'm at a game. Right. So yes and no, but the problem is most schools don't have that option in the first place down in like Fort Wayne, Indianapolis, like a lot of those games have live streaming video that you can watch. So I don't know how many people stay home and watch it. I'd rather be at the game, but I also don't want to have to make that decision. Oh, and that's the thing too, is like, yeah, you're going to make people decide unless you're a right. family member, you're going to make people decide, do right. I want to go to the college game or am I going to go to the high school? Game? And that's And that's messed up because like for yeah. us, it's like, okay, well, do I choose my job or do I choose to go support, you know, a high school football game? Like that's don't, don't put that on me. Like, that's not fair. Of course I'm going to have to choose my job, you know, and that's, that's not cool. Finally, Mark, thank you for the super chat. He says, I grew up in South Bend, West Side, went to South Bend, Washington when we won the state championship in football. Remember the 31 blueberries? Now, this I assume is, he's talking about State Road 31. Oh, Highway 31. Okay. That's, see, I'm that's guessing. What, I'm guessing. Right. Because we were talking about the Blueberry Festival, and I think this one came up yeah. around that time. You're right. So, You're yeah. Right. All West right. Side pride, baby. There you go. One of the many schools Vince has uh, worked at. <laughs> That's in his, true. In his high school yep. career. It has made him older, meaner, and more bitter in his life. You're not wrong. <laughs> it's ingrained deep in my psyche now. Yep. All right. Well, that's going to do it for tonight. Upon further review coming up at uh, 8 o'clock Eastern time, that will be the live show. Vince and Brian will be there. 
So uh, you be there as well. Ness, appreciate having you uh, as a participant here tonight. We will see yeah, you baby. and everyone else in the in the near future. You missed a comma. No problem. <laughs> hit the like button on your way out. You can make, make, make up for the lack of a comma. Just hit the like button That's on right. your way out. Subscribe, rate, and review. And we'll talk to you. Tomorrow, got the uh, got an NC State reporter coming up on tomorrow's show. Ooh. So we we'll got right. that coming up. Ivy Nation Sports Talk. We'll talk to you then.